Hi, Mark. I'm Maria, and my Chinese name is Lu Jiayi. My student number is S0241054, and the title of the speech is A Warrior's Cry Against Child Marriage, and the speaker is Memory Benda. And my level at NCUE is junior. Here is my speech. I will begin today by sharing a poem written by my friend from Malawi, Alan Perry. Alan is only 30 years old, but when we were going through the collection of poetry that we wrote, I found her poem so interesting, so motivating, so I read it for you. She entitled her poem, I will marry when I want. Laughter. I will marry when I want. My mother can force me to marry. My father can, cannot force me to marry. My uncle, my aunt, my brother or sister cannot force me to marry. No one in the world can force me to marry. I will marry when I want. When I want. Even if you beat me. Even if you chase me away. Even if you do anything bad to me. I will marry when I want. I will marry when I want. But not before I am well educated and not before I'm all grown up. I will marry when I want. This poem might seem odd, written by a 13 years old girl, but where I an alien, alien come from, this poem, which I have just read, just read to you, is a warrior's cry. I'm from Mar Mar Malawi. Malawi is one of the poorest, poorest countries, it's very poor, where gender equality is questionable. Growing up in that country, I couldn't make my own choice in life. I couldn't even explore personal opportunities in life. I will tell you a story of two different girls, two beautiful girls. These, girl, these girls grow up under the same roof. They are eating the same food. Sometimes they will share clothes and even shoes. But their life and not differently in two different paths paths the other girl is my little sister my little sister was only 11 11 years old when she got pregnant it's a it's a hurtful thing not only did it hurt her even me i was going through a hard time as well and it it is my culture once you teach puberty stage you are supposed to go to initiation camps in these initiation camps you are taught how to sexually please a man there is this special day which they call very special day where a man who is hired by the community comes to the camp and sleep with sleeps with the little girls imagine the trauma that these gir young girls go through every day most girls end up pregnant they even contact HIV and AIDS. And other sexually transmitted diseases. For my little sister, she ended up being pregnant. Today, she's only 16 years old and she has three children. Her first marriage did not, did not survive, nor did her second marriage. On the other side, this is, there is the girl. There is this girl. She is amazing. Laughter, applause. I call her amazing because she is. She is very fabulous. That girl is me. Laughter. When I was 13 years old, I was told you are grown up. You have now reached of age. You are supposed to go to the initi initiation camp. I, I was like, what? I'm not going to go to the initiation camp. Initiation camps. You know what the woman said to me? You are a stupid, stupid girl, stubborn. You do not respect the traditions of our society, of our community. I said no because I know where I was going. I know what I wanted in life. I had a lot of dreams as a young girl. As a young girl, I wanted to get well educated to find a decent job in the future. I was imagining myself as a lawyer, seated on the big chair. Those were the imagination that were going through my mind every day. 
and I knew that one day I would contribute something, a little something to my community. But every day after refusing, women would tell me, "Look at you, you are all grown up. Your little sister have a baby, has a baby. What about you?" That was the music they are hearing every day, and that's the music that girls hear every day when they don't do something that the community need them to do. When I compare the two story between me and my sister, I say, "Why cannot? Why cannot? Why can't I something? Do something? Why can I change something that has happened for a long, long time in our community?" That was when I called other girls, just like my sister, who have children, who have been classes, but they have forgotten how to read and write. I I said, "Come on, we can remind each other how to read and write again, how to hold a pen, how to read, to hold a book." It was a great time I have I had with them. Nor did I just learn a little about them, but. But they were able to tell me their personal stories. What they were facing every day as young mothers. That was when I, when I was like, why can't we take all these things that are happening to us and present them, and tell our mothers, our traditional leaders, that these are the wrong things? It was a scary thing to do. Because these traditional leaders, they are already accustomed, accustomed to the things that have been there for ages. A hard time to change, but a good thing to try. <coughs> so I, tr- so we try. It's very, it was very hard, but we pushed. We, and I'm here to say that in my community. It was the first community after girls pu- pushed so hard to our traditional leaders, leader, and our leaders stood up for us and said no girl has to be married before the age of eighteen. Applause. In my community, <coughs> that was the first time of the first time a community they had to call the call the bylaws. The first bylaw that protected protected girls in our community. We did not stop there. We forged ahead. We were determined to fight for girls, not just in my community, but even in other communities. When the child marriage bills, the child marriage bill was being presented in February, we were there in other power. We were there at the par- par- Parliament House every day. When the member of Parliament were entering, we were telling them, "Would you please support the bill?" And we don't have much technology like here, but we have our small phones. So we said, "Why can't we? Why can't we get their numbers and text them?" So we did that. It was a good thing. Applause. So when the bill passes. We text them back. Thank you for supporting the bill. Laughter. And when the bill was signed by the president, making it into law, it was applause. Now in Malawi, eighteen is the legal marriage age from fifteen to eighteen. Applause. It's a good thing to know that the bills passed. And let me tell you this: there are countries where eighteen is the legal marriage age, but don't we? Don't we hear cries, cries of women and girls every day? Every day, girls, li- girls' lives, girls' lives are being wasted away. This is a high, high time for t- leaders to honor their commitment. In honoring, in honoring this commitment, it means keeping girls' issue at heart every time. We don't have to subject, subject it a second, but we have to know that women. As we are in this room, we are not just women. We are not just girls. We are extraordinary. We can do more. And another thing for Malawi is not just Malawi, but other countries. The laws which are there. You know how a law is not a law until 
it is enforced. The law which has just recently passed and the laws that in other countries has been there have been there. They need to be public publicized at the local level, at the community level, where girls' issues are every are very striking. Girls faces girls face issues, difficult issues at the community level every day. So if these young girls know that there are laws protecting them, they will be able to stand up and defend themselves because they, they will know that there is a law that protects them. And another thing I will say is that girls' voices and women's voices are beautiful. They are there, but we can do it alone. Males advocate it. They have to jump in, to step in, and work together. It's a collective work. What we need is that what girls everywhere else will need, good education, and above all, not to marry whilst 11. And furthermore, I know that together we can transform the legal, the cultural, and political framework that denies girls of their rights. I'm standing here today and declare, declaring, declare, declaring that we can end child marriage in a generation. This is the moment where a girl and a girl and millions, millions of girls worldwide will be able to say, I, I will marry when I want. Applause. Thank you. Applause.